I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is gun violence in California. After a deadly shooting steps from our state's capital, new questions about gun control and criminal justice reform. Democratic State Senator Bob Hertzberg wants to make it easier to sue those responsible for illegal guns. He's with us. Then a different perspective from Republican Assemblyman James Gallagher, who says progressive policies are making our streets less safe. Then we have some fun. Welcome, welcome, welcome to John Oliver on the Street. Now, who better to do this with than... Honestly, it's not bloody bad. Comedian Matt Friend can do more than 250 impressions. He's in studio to share some of his best, as the issue is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. Welcome inside our newsroom and welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. This week, a mass shooting just steps from where California's laws are written at our state capitol. Six people were killed, at least 12 people injured in a shooting that police say was gang related. Investigators believe at least five shooters fired guns. At least two of the shooters were firing stolen guns. Both Democrats and Republicans with very different responses to all of this. Let's start with the Democrats. Collectively, our legislation could work to stop the kind of mass shootings that changed the city over the weekend. This week, the legislature moved forward on legislation by State Senator Bob Hertzberg and backed by Governor Newsom that would make it easier to sue gun manufacturers. Joining us now is Bob Hertzberg. He is the State Senate Majority Leader Emeritus, which means he's been around for a minute. He is the former speaker of the California Assembly, and he's currently running for a seat on the L.A. County Board of Supervisors. Senator Hertzberg, welcome to The Issue Is for the first time. Great to see you. Hey, thanks for having me, and thanks for doing the show. I really appreciate it. It's an important contribution to the debate. Thank you very much. So in the most basic terms, how does this legislation work? <laughs> Well, basically what it does in the simplest terms is it adds a new tool to go after illegal guns, not your guns if you go deer hunting or if you want to protect your home or if you want to, you know, protect your business, you're entitled to have that. That's not the issue. It has to be an illegal gun. An illegal gun is three types, a assault weapon, it's a, it's a, a 50 caliber machine gun, or it's what's called a ghost gun. What's a ghost gun? Generally, what it is is somebody files off the serial number so it's not traceable or they get a gun kit and put it together and it's never traceable. Now, why is that so important? It's important because 65 percent of all of the ATF guns that have been seized in the United States that are ghost guns have come from California. And the LAPD has declared what they call a ghost gun epidemic. So what we did in the simplest terms was to take the guidance from the United States Supreme Court in the abortion case in Texas. And we said, OK, we're going to give that same private right of action to give a new tool, basically like an Amber Alert or a picture up in a post office or whatever it is, to see if we can get the community to come out. Don't know if it'll work, but you'll try anything given this gun violence and said, we'll give you ten thousand dollars plus attorney's fees, and you can get an injunction, you can go after someone who you see manufacturing or transporting or selling these ghost guns or illegal assault weapons. Do you That's think right. that that law, the Texas law, where you can sue people who make abortions possible, do you think that's constitutional? It's constitutional because the Supreme Court said it was constitutional. <laughs> I, I don't think it was constitutional. I've been before the United States Supreme Court on issues with my father and others. I don't think it's constitutional, but I don't make that decision. Five justices of the Supreme Court say that. So if that's Absolutely. not constitutional, how is this one constitutional? But it, 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 it is constitutional because the Supreme Court said, I suspect someone will take it up and the court will have to answer that question. And the one thing I want to share with you, because I'm a homework person, is I went and read all the briefs in the United States Supreme Court to make sure we did this right. And guess what? There was a firearms coalition that filed in a brief in the Supreme Court that says, please, please don't uphold the abortion law in, in Texas, because if you do, they're going to use this exact same thing for us against guns. And, and so I use that as guidance in drafting this law. It's going to be very hard for the United, Cal United States Supreme Court to say, well, we didn't know about guns because the issue was directly before them. Right. It's kind of an interesting brief, you know. What do you say to critics who say that California already has the strictest gun laws in the country? The Sacramento shootings still happen. The early investigation there suggests that was a stolen gun. Uh, this legislation isn't necessarily going to stop somebody from stealing a gun. What do you say to those critics? The thing that we do in government that we're supposed to do if we're thoughtful and common sense and smart 
is we live and we grow and we course correct and we try to deal with the injustices that are happening in the system where people are stuck in jail because they can't afford to get out because they can't afford bail. But at the same time, we make sure someone's a flight risk or a public safety risk, they stay in. So it's a legitimate question. And, and the idea is, is, is we want to make sure the system is just. That's what it's about, criminal justice. The focus here on this bill that happened before Sacramento is trying to use a new tool that yeah is actually tough on crime because the idea is it enforces the criminal law about illegal guns. All right, State Senator Bob Hertzberg, thanks for coming on The Issue Is and sharing your views. Good to see you. Hey, listen, like Arnold Schwarzenegger says, I'll be back. <laughs> he actually said that on this show. Uh, now, really? for another perspective. I love it. <laughs> Gonna have a different view now from Republican Assembly Leader James Gallagher. We'll see if he does Schwarzenegger impressions or not. Uh, he represents the Western Sacramento Valley, including Chico. He graduated top of his class from UC Davis Law School and is a father of five. I feel like we could do an entire show on what it's like to raise five kids. But Assemblyman, welcome to the issue is for the very first time. Uh, we definitely could, Alex, and it's a pleasure. <laughs> Uh, you just heard from Senator Hertzberg a lot to unpack in what he said, but let's start with the gun proposal itself. Should residents be able to sue makers of illegal guns for a $10,000 reward? I mean, the problem with the good senator's proposal there, and, and you kind of honed in on it, is that it doesn't get at the heart of the issue here. Uh, you know, what is the problem? Overwhelmingly, uh, these incidents of gun violence, and they happen in every city. Uh, you know, the most recent was this terrible incident in Sacramento. But they happen in every city in California, and it's the same MO. It's unrehabilitated felons, uh, dangerous persons who are not supposed to have guns in the first place, who have modified or, or stolen weapons, and they're using them to victimize and kill people on our streets. Uh, and so we as Republicans say, let's address that issue, that exact issue that is the cause of this gun violence head on. And so we've proposed what I think are very reasonable reforms, which is one, stop this early release program uh, at the state prisons that's going on right now that's releasing people with, without any proven rehabilitation. Uh, second, let's have penalties and enhancements for those who are using guns in the commission of a crime. This legislature took that away two years ago. Just to be clear, so would you vote against the Hertzberg proposal? Yes, because I don't think it gets out the problem. I mean, you, you know, going and suing a manufacturer, let's say you succeed. Um, that doesn't talk. That doesn't stop these guns from being in the hands of dangerous people on these streets. Well, let's dig in a little bit more on some of the criminal justice issues at play here, specifically the news that one of the suspects in this shooting was part of that early release program. Here's a quote from you from this week. I'm going to read it right now. Quote, this was a violent felon with a long rap sheet who should have been in prison. If he was, this tragedy might have been avoided. If this violence a few blocks from the Capitol doesn't serve as a wake up call to the policymakers in this building, I don't know what will. Do you think it is serving as a wake up call? And what's the most important change you want to see on criminal justice? One of the suspects here was someone who was released early. He was supposed to be doing a 10 year sentence. He only did four years. Um, the, what he went in for was beating his girlfriend very badly. Um, and he's had a history of, of possessing firearms that he's not supposed to have. Um, and we have a system right now uh, that's been implemented by emergency regulations um, at the state prison system, CDCR, that gives people like this automatic credits, automatic credits that help them to get out earlier without, without proving that they've gone through any kind of programming to be rehabilitated. And so to me, that's a big part of this. We have to end that program. The governor can do it. And that's why we're actually circulating a letter among legislators right now asking everyone to sign on stop this emergency regulation program, which by the way, they're proposing to make permanent, Alex. On April 14th, there's a hearing um, at, at CDCR to make this permanent. We have to stop this madness. You know, the challenge for you, of course, is that Democrats have super majorities in the Senate and the Assembly. How do you get what you want when essentially they could completely ignore you and roll you on every issue? Well, I think they can't ignore this issue anymore. I mean, this this was a block away from where we, you know, debate where we have, you know, our assembly floor sessions. 
Um, this really hit home. And I, and really, you know what? I think this is going to be bipartisan. We're asking our, our colleagues on both sides of the aisle, stop this early release program and let's let's put some reasonable reforms in place that help ensure that dangerous people aren't getting back out on the streets, that there's penalties for crime. It's time to have reasonable laws and accountability for these dangerous crimes. And I, I think that we can get Democrats to agree with us on this issue. I hope so. You know, this is such a serious and such an important discussion, but on this show as well, we like to have a little bit of fun. We like to get to know our guests. This is the first time that you've been on. So it's your first opportunity to play what we call personal issues, which is where we put 30 seconds on the clock to get to know some of your favorites. Are you ready for the real hard questions? Okay, I, I hope so. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. What is your favorite TV show? Um, gosh, that's a hard one right now. Uh, next question. We'll say the Sorry. issue is. Favorite sports team? Sacramento Kings. Favorite meal? Uh, lasagna. With five kids, what's your favorite Disney movie? Um, Aladdin. Who's your favorite Democrat? Uh, <laughs> I would have Kevin McCarty. Okay, and, and who is your role model? Um, my father. Um, he's just always been a great source of encouragement to me. He's been a, you know, someone that taught me right from wrong, uh, taught me how to work hard. Um, and, you know, I, I owe a lot to him. We love that. Assemblyman James Gallagher, thanks so much for coming on for the very first time. Really appreciate you sharing your views. Thank you. Coming up next, we've got comedian Matt Friend. There he is. You do not want to miss his incredible impression session. Stay with us. We're going to have some fun when we come back. episode of The World According to Jeff Goldblum. We're going to be exploring Pitter Pat, Pitter Pat. We're going to be exploring celebrity impressions. That was comedian Matt Friend being pulled uh, to perform with Jeff Goldblum. Matt is an online sensation known for his more than 250 impressions. Matt Friend, welcome back to The Issue Is. Welcome into our newsroom set as we build our main set. Uh, it's great to see you again. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be back. This you know, is amazing. So the last time you were here, yeah. we showed you uh, us showing Dr. Anthony Fauci the impression that you did of him. We've right. got some, some video of that moment uh, where Dr. Fauci uh, really loved what you were doing, <laughs> smiled at it. Well, since that moment, you have been taking your impressions on the road with many of the people yes. that you're impersonating. One of them is John Oliver from last week tonight. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to John Oliver on the Street. Now, who better to do this with than Honestly, it's not bloody bad. It will How many times do people do this to you? Is it annoying or what? I mean, honestly, it's the first time it's happened, and I do rather hope it's the last. And even though it's, he's American too, doesn't that make it even worse? It does. It's certainly slightly offensive. You don't have me walking around New York saying, Hey, good out of here. So what was that like? It was so surreal, honestly. Just having the opportunity to meet these people is kind of the comedian and the impressionist dream. And that one was a kind of a planned occurrence because we were doing a set at the same comedy club that night and then I approached him and the rest was history, as you know. Yeah, and, and you've been doing a lot of comedy work. You were recently at Caroline's in New York yes. as the headliner. This is one of the biggest comedy clubs in all of New York. <laughs> Sold it out. Now you're here in Southern California doing comedy all over the place this yes. weekend. What can we expect at a Matt Friend show? A lot of impressions, a lot of energy. Uh, I'm bringing the characters, the voices as always, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be here in LA. I'm gonna try to do some LA impressions. We got the Newsome on the show tonight. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, so for people that wanna see that show, they can go to mattfriend.com to get tickets. That's and right. so, you know, the, the real thing you do is the celebrity impressions. We wanna see some of those now. What you do is you weigh in often on the news. That's right. And one of the big news stories of this week is President Obama, former President Obama, back at the White House. <laughs> yes. That is former President Barack Obama back at the White House. First time since leaving office. Former President Trump never invited his predecessor back for a visit, which is usually what happens. 
Former President Trump, in fact, joins us now. Uh, thank you for coming back on, on the issue, is, sir. Well, excuse me. What I can tell you is Barack Obama. Excuse me. Stop the laughing. You're disgusting. What I can tell you is Barack Obama. Obama went back to the White House. They talk about the Russian collusion. There's the Obama collusion. He's running the government, and a lot of people are saying it. Stop the smiling. Thank you very much, Annie. I like your, your new hairstyle. That's good uh, for you. Mr. President. You're nasty. All right. Uh, now we are going to uh, be joined by former President Barack Obama because it's important to get his response. Well, uh, first of all, Alex, it is good to be back on the issue is. Uh, and it was good to be back at the White House. So I just have to say that whatever the last guy said, it's just not true. And uh, Joe is doing a great job. So thank you so much. <laughs> you know, uh, we saw a lot of Democrats at the White House this week. We did not see the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. Of course, we're talking about Mitch McConnell. Yes. <laughs> well, what you have to realize is the White House made a very bad mistake inviting Obama back because he is a disgrace, a disgrace to the country. Scoobity boo boo. Scoobity doo. You know, we also wanted to hear the views of Republican Senator from Texas, Ted Cruz, with us now. You know, if, if I could offer Barack a word of advice, I would say stay away from politics, stay away from Washington, D.C., make Hawaii your Cancun, and go back there. <laughs> I love that warm weather. <laughs> uh, Republican governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, in the House as well. Yes, so President Biden welcomed Barack Obama <laughs> to the White House. Many people are observing that Obama wasn't wearing a mask, which is blatantly hypocritical, because when you look at what the Republicans are doing, it's clearly different to the Democrats. We don't have a mask expectation, and Obama's running the government. Floridians should be angry. Okay, it, we have back with us our most frequent guest here on the issue is the Democratic governor of California, Gavin Newsom. Governor. Yes, well, I believe that it was so great. Let me just show some chest. I know <laughs> that when I see Obama, he is a man who I clearly try to copy in all matters of the heart, speeches, physically, and my new campaign slogan uh, is, yes, we can. I invented that. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Very original. Thank you, sir. Finally, uh, we haven't seen this person in a while. The former president of the United States from House of Cards, Frank Underwood, is here. <laughs> really? You see, when Barack Obama referred to President Biden as the vice president, that got me thinking very quickly. There's two kinds of vice presidents, Joe Matz and Matadors. Now, which do you think I intend to be? Thank you very much. Wow, it's been a while. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that was disturbing. <laughs> very disturbing. We're bringing him back, I guess. <laughs> uh, we're going to have more with Matt Friend. Coming up, um, we're counting the stars. Yes. Uh, Hollywood celebs are going to react to Will Smith's slap oh, and the punishment. Matt's bringing those when we come back. You're watching. The issue is. One of the big stories from Hollywood this week, the Academy is out with its punishment for Will Smith. For 10 years, he's going to be banned from attending any Academy functions, including the Academy Awards, after that famous slap of Chris Rock at the Oscars. We are back with celebrity impressionist Matt Friend, who's brought his friends along to react to the Will Smith story. Let's start with Jeff Goldblum joining oh, us. Oh, oh my golly. Yes. <laughs> there, for Will Smith, there may be trouble ahead. Slapping, slapping, hitting. I'm more of a, more of a dancer myself. I don't, I don't agree, agree with physical combat. Yes, yes. <laughs> also uh, with us, with his reaction, an Oscar winner himself, Rami Malek. <laughs> well, Will Smith did a very dirty thing, and I think that the crowd should be upset. The crowd should be as energized as they were for Freddie Mercury at Live Aid. <laughs> that is definitely uh, true. Uh, the king of all media, perhaps Matt Friend's best friend, Sirius XM host Howard Stern is here. All right. I mean, Jesus, I got to tell you, this Will, this Robin, are you hearing this? This Will Smith thing was great for him not to have the self-control to just, just breathe in that moment. I mean, it's unbelievable. Chris Rock should become the president. The way he handled that, it was crazy. I mean, if I did this to this guy, Alex, I wouldn't be back a lot in the building. It's a horrible thing. <laughs> It's time for a woman's perspective. The iconic actress Jennifer Coolidge is with us. Oh, oh, well, 
Chris Rock's face looked like the 4th of July. Oh, I want him to slap me next, you dirty dog. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Wow, that, that, was, that was a moment. Look um, at this. Finally. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Oh. Finally, uh, the host of Watch What Happens Live on Bravo, Andy Cohen, is yes, back. That's amazing. I mean, the Will Smith slap was like, it was almost like a housewives moment. I want Will and Chris, okay, to come on my show, Watch What Happens Live, shameless promo, and reenact the slap with housewives. That'd be amazing. Want a shot, Ski Alex? Uh, yes. Indeed. Cheer, amazing. Cheer, cheers. Cheers. There we way, go. You're, you're cute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. To see Matt He's Friend cute. in person yes. in Hollywood, you can go to mattfriend.com. Uh, and uh, as we go to break with the Above Los Angeles <laughs> account taking us above Hollywood. Matt Friend, great job. Thanks for having me, Alex. That was something else. <laughs> Let's see if anybody can top that segment next week on The Issue. Is more of the show right after this. All those big Jerry Brown and his dogs, Calusa and Callie, are taking us on a ride we'll never forget. Ooh, I just want to make sure my foot is on the accelerator. Our thanks to the Sacramento Press Club for honoring our interview with former Governor Jerry Brown this week. They named it a finalist for Broadcast Interview of the Year in California. You can watch it right now at youtube.com slash Alex Michelson. We end this week with images from opening day of baseball, the day when everybody thinks that their team's gonna win the World Series. California has five teams, many of whom are legitimate World Series contenders. I'm Alex Michelson. Thanks for watching The Issue Is, and go Dodgers and Angels.